and uh, we have a lot of poor people in Cleveland. So every time people say the middle class, I always like, well, it's not just the middle class either. Um, you know, and I think, uh, I know a lot of people have said it in front of the you know, it's about the future of the state of Ohio. I think it's, uh, in addition, about our whole entire way of life. And uh, we want, I think labor has always stood for bringing people up, in, out of poverty, into the middle class. And so I, I, I always, uh, I've been in a lot of meetings where people say, well, my people aren't in the middle class. They don't even know what the middle class feels like. So uh, it's really for all of us. Um, and I really like both the, the brother and the sister before me who mentioned that we want to be proactive and, and uh, keep going. We've got a tremendous opportunity here um, to really make this state uh, into what it should be, what it has the potential to be, what we always thought it was going to be. <laughs> uh, and we've been kind of decades now. Uh, I remember back those fights when we, we brought uh, collective bargaining into being. And, um, you know, it's, it's like progress is not a straight line. We go up, we go two steps forward and one step back. Sometimes one step forward, two steps back. And uh, we took a big uh, beating. We went many steps back in November. But I think that is is just what we needed to give us the, the appropriate tip. We all are in this together. And uh, it's just terrific that we're starting this day with uh, all of us together. And hopefully we will stay together uh, well beyond November. Because uh, when we, uh, when we, we're we going to be keeping the status quo by winning in November, we have, we've got much more to do. We, we are all uh, living under the most draconian budget I think I can recall in my entire life. Um, so things aren't going to be terrific on November 9th, we can, but they will be terrific in the months and years ahead if we can stay together and if we can continue to fight together. And uh, that's, that's what it's all about. Thanks. Thank you. I'm Austin Keezer again with the Shawnee Labor Council. And, and the eight counties I represent for the AFL-CIO are all Appalachian counties in the state of Ohio. And it's the poorest region in the state of Ohio and part of the poorest region in the, in the country. Um, there's obviously other poor places in the state of Ohio, but as a region, it's, it's hit very hard. Uh, median wages are half of that, but they are in other parts of the state of Ohio. Um, home foreclosure rates are, are through the roof. Um, a lot of people don't own a home in the first place. But, you know, and especially in the debt that we're just taking, you know, we've seen the skilled trades, unemployment 50% range, also represent the electricians. So we're losing a lot of good jobs. And those aren't just um, jobs for their families, but those are consumers class jobs. Those are the jobs that continue to drive our economy. What's left of it, you know, we have generations that have been displaced by you know, steel mills and shoe factories leaving and being offshore. And so it just keeps getting worse and worse. And all this is is another attack and, and moving us further in that direction, as opposed to taking us back in the other direction where we did have some prosperity. And what we're, you know, what we're looking at is, is people in jobs and family services, you know, taking cuts when they're sitting there helping all these people. I mean, where we need it the most, is, is those government services now that are put in place, those social safety nets were put in place for times like these. And now they're going to erode them and they're going to cut the workers um, that, are, that are there doing these jobs, um, countless hours, stressed out as they can be, um, understaffed, and you know, then you pile on the firefighters and school teachers. It just goes on and on, but it's just another step in that direction. And in our region, this bill doesn't just have the effect of moving us in the wrong direction, it kind of has the effect of throwing the last shovel of dirt on our grave to, in our economy. It's, it, it could really be the end of our economy because with those jobs that left, we you know a lot of what we do and a lot of jobs that we have in Southern Ohio are providing services to the rest of the state of Ohio. We have maximum security prisons, we have things like that that we supply um, and do services for the rest of the state in order to have a local economy. This bill just went absolutely in the wrong direction and, and uh, we're ready to fight. It's galvanized the community um, we, you know, uh, with the minority communities, the, the churches. Uh, we've, we've put together some great coalitions, and we're going to keep, we're going to keep driving our part of the state. So thank you for being here. Thanks, Austin. Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Shonda Steen. I'm a member of Work in America. Um, I'm just like to share a little bit of my story. For the past 20 years, um, I've worked in the engineering field. And um, I didn't have the benefit of having a new job, but I truly understand the benefit because I was affected. On December the 11th, um, 2009, my supervisor walked into <coughs> my, my cubicle and asked me to follow him. I followed him and I asked him, 
asked him, um, am I being laid off? And he said, yes. And all I could remember was saying, wow. I went downstairs and they laid me off. And then I was escorted back to my cubicle. I packed my stuff. I had been there for over 10 years. I was escorted to my car and I asked my supervisor, what did I do to get laid off? And he said, Shonda, you didn't do anything. He said, um, for the company to lay you off. Excuse me. I just, I just want to let you know, just because I didn't have a union job doesn't mean that I didn't understand the importance of the union and all the workers, union and non-working. You see, my dad was a union man. And when he started off in his family, he had to work in non-union <coughs> jobs on construction sites. And he told me a story when I was growing up that I would never forget of one of his friends was in a ditch digging and it caved in and crushed it. And that was one of his biggest fears. So when he, at, when he was able to join the union, he didn't have to no longer work in unsafe environment and take low-paying jobs. Last week, um, Governor Kasich stated on Morning Joe that all the state employees, it was their ego. Their ego. It's not their egos. They just want to pay to have a chance at the American dream to have decent paying jobs and safe environments. Just like my dad provided for us, they want to provide for their families. And if I could ask one question to Governor Kinsley, it would be, we, the middle class and the poor, have been hit very hard by this Wall Street created recession and the politics that outsource tens of thousands of jobs overseas. Why are you, Governor Kasich, and other lawmakers not creating jobs to put us back to work, just like the jobs of the rail system that would put many of the Ohio people back to work? You're destroying them, not creating them. Thank you. Thank you. Before you go, Andre, I um, just want to um, interject here. I mean, as Harriet said, this, um, what appears to be a union attack, has really um, been an attack to all of us, whether you are in Appalachia, uh, very poor parts of our state, African Americans who have found their way into the middle class as a result of being uh, a part of uh, the public sector, um, good paying jobs. Um, and um, the unemployed. Um, and so this coalition that we're talking about, this broad coalition that we're building, um, it's not about exclusively about saving those jobs of union members um, who will be directly impacted if this bill is allowed to stand. But it is about a community. It, it, it is about, as uh, President Berger talked about, the vision that we want to have for America. So again, all of you all who stepped up to help uh, get the signatures on behalf of Senate Bill 5 and what you're going to do in continuing to fight this fight throughout uh, the state will give us the energy and the courage that we need to stand against any future attacks that he's going to lobby against the state. He's already in six months done more to set our state backwards than um, we've seen in any recent history. And so this coalition that we're building is not no longer are we going to be doing transactional relationships with the community. This is a time that we can transform those relationships into real partnerships and real friends. And so we, again, thank you all for being here.